आथा योगा अनुशासनम नमस्ते वेलकम टू अनरावल द थ्रेड a podcast for people who want to apply the yoga sutras to yoga practice and to life today available online at simple-yoga.org where you can also find courses articles videos and guided meditations to enrich your practice i am ruben vasquez your companion on this journey of exploration i am grateful for your comments and questions It really makes my day to know that unravel the thread is making a difference in your practice and in your life. I am excited to announce that the complete Unravel the Thread book is available for sale. It is the complete guide for living the Yoga Sutras. Please check the website for more information. Also, if you love the podcast and want to support my work as an independent content creator on the simple-yoga.org website, you can easily donate to keep the podcast and website going. On today's episode, we continue our journey through chapter 3 of the Yoga Sutra with Sutra 3:14 that says, "The characteristics of an object can be dormant, active, or potential. Yet there is an essence underlying the object yoga philosophy is one perspective among many views developed over centuries in the region currently known as india some views maintain that the world we experience is a very convincing illusion that covers an unchanging reality that is eternal while other viewpoints argue that there is no real enduring essence but a confluence of ever changing streams of stimuli coming together at each moment this sutra can be interpreted as saying that the world is real instead of being an illusion and that there is an essence to any object in existence that essence is independent from whoever perceives that object Each essence has inherent characteristics that can be in three states. In the first state, inert or dormant, some characteristics of the object are at rest and thus not manifesting. In the second state, the characteristics are active, so they are manifest and therefore can be perceived by an outside observer. The third state consists of latent or potential characteristics that are yet to manifest. One way to illustrate this is by thinking of a mango. The fruit hanging from the tree no longer shows the characteristics of the pollinated flower from which the mango developed. That same fruit does not show the characteristics of the mango trees that are directly linked to this particular mango over centuries. The mango fruit hanging from the tree presents the characteristics active at this time in its color, fragrance and shape. If the fruit is not ripe yet, it will not have its typical sweetness, so the sweetness is potential. Also potential in the seed at the core of the fruit is a full mango tree that, if planted under the right conditions, will take several years to produce new mangoes. Also potential in this mango fruit are all the mango trees that could be planted from the mango seeds produced by the mango trees resulting from the seed of this mango. Thus, each mango fruit has a dormant set of characteristics, a past. It also has a set of potentialities that have not yet manifested, a future. Its current characteristics are its present. Comparing this mango to other mangoes on the same branch of the tree may show that despite all their shared characteristics each mango is slightly different. This sutra suggests that beneath all the subtly changing characteristics there is an essence something that makes each mango unique. This underlying essence This underlying essence makes all the characteristics of the mango come together in a particular way, yet its characteristics manifest at different times in a variety of ways. This is another concept where there may be various perspectives. Does the essence of the mango exist as a pure idea somewhere beyond physical reality? 
Or is that essence purely physical? In that case, does the essence of something relate to its DNA? Or is the essence of every mango connected to a virtual network of information connecting all mangoes of that species, overlapping in turn with a similar network encompassing all mangoes, which is embedded in a larger network of fruits, and so on? Or does the essence of a mango manifest as a result of the interaction between awareness and the world? Is it possible that the essence of each object is part of what some people call consciousness, a distributed, dynamic, multidimensional matrix connecting all of existence, with the myriad of manifestation of objects in space and time being only the tiny fraction available through our senses? Can that consciousness be what is called God, the Absolute, Supreme Being, the Source? These large questions can offer you a point of departure for contemplation. Remember that whatever response you arrive at consists only of thoughts, ideas, or words. It is only a pointer to that ineffable wholeness. If Samyama is one way of tapping into that deep interconnectedness, then it makes sense that the following sutras present specific ways of accessing that matrix of existence. At a more personal and concrete level, you may explore your ways of being, physical, mental, and emotional, to find out if they are dormant, active, or latent. If your ways of being change continually, consciously and unconsciously, who is noticing these changes? Can the observer of your ways of being be observed? You may also choose to contemplate these questions about whatever you experience. Is there an essence to it? Is it an illusion? Is it a temporary confluence of sensory input and awareness? As usual, one more way of exploring the meaning of this sutra is by chanting it. You can choose to chant it in its traditional form with some of the words coming together. Shanto dita vyapadesya dharmanupati dharmi Another option is to chant each word in the sutra individually. Shanta Udita Avya Padesha Dharma Anupati Dharami 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 Thank you very much for listening. I hope you can join me for the next episode when we will continue our exploration with Sutra 315. If Unravel the Thread is part of your day or week and you feel generous, I would appreciate it if you could go to simple-yoga.org and support my work by offering a donation. Thank you. Also, remember that you can now have your own copy of Unravel the Thread. 
I would like you to know that in August I'll offer a free one-hour workshop, Spine-Focused Sequencing Through Yoga Alliance, and the first Thursday in September I will offer a master class for keeping your spine healthy. You can find more information on the website. I hope that you can join me. Until next time, Namaste. Namaste.